Here we go. This is, I believe, what is this? Episode nine? Yeah. Very special episode today. Yes. Got my, my, my bigger brother who's younger than me. Younger, bigger brother? Smarter, funnier. He acts like the bigger brother. You're my bigger brother two years younger than me. Well, I don't know how that works. You might look up to me physically, but I think we <laughs> both look up to each other in different aspects. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody that meets both of us are like, that's your older brother, yeah? I'm like, 100%. Yeah, that's my older brother. I, yeah. I still forget that he's younger. I know. Still. He's, oh God, you're just better in every way, dude. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> the podcast. Yes, this thanks is for a, having me. Just so you know, there's only one person more requested than you, and that's Noah. Uh, understandable. Who is buffer than both of us. Have you seen the lats on that kid? <laughs> yeah. No, I see him. I'm feeding him. I He had that bunker shirt on yesterday and it looked like barracks, like yeah, I think armory when, coming out of him. I think when Noah finally hits this podcast, people are going to be shocked. You're going to have to yeah. widen the doors. You're going to be shocked how buff Bagwell is. going to be like this. <clears throat> Mr. Bone Broth. That's what we're <laughs> calling him. Uh, we, have, we have something special today. This is special for the podcast and I'm happy you're here. You have one of these. What do you got? Check this out. We got this for the podcast. I haven't. Uh, I've cut the tape, but I have not opened it. Here we go. This is this is because of you guys. I want to thank you in advance. It's one thing to listen and watch the podcast. It's another to actually subscribe and uh, be a part of our journey. And we have got the brand new podcast spelled Dang. wrong. What the heck? What? <laughs> I'm just -uh. kidding. No, it oh. looks great. It looks amazing. There she is. Woo! Are you gonna there hang it on the is. wall? Where we at? Good job. That's yeah, so man. cool. So that's something uh, I'm going to put right here for this episode. Yeah, it's not going to stay. Uh, that's, yeah, that's that's right it here. might stay oh, vertical. There we go. There we go. So Have country has been replaced by your <laughs> subscriber count. Yeah. Country, country is, you know, it's summertime, so he's traveling a lot. He's doing music festivals. And uh, now we have a silver play button. Thank you guys so, so much for that. Um, so cool. Watch and subscribe and be a part of everything. Apple, Spotify. We had more Apple listeners this month than we did on Spotify, which is surprising. We have video on Spotify now. There's lots of places to see and watch. Well, I was probably a part of that because last Thursday or Friday, uh, I actually binge listened to like four in a row. So, really? Yeah. Dang. And I was wondering where all those views came from. Yeah, four of them <laughs> were me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank and you, bro. I got to say, the, the, I was only listening to audio. I couldn't watch video. And the sound of you guys eating those testicles oh. and liver. It was like. <laughs> just slurping. It was disgusting. Mm, well, it like. Ooh. Well, just so you know, it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was not the best. Uh, hey, and I, I thought out some raw liver today. Brittany's been it's killing it. Ah. This girl's killing it, man. Like, she's just chomping on balls now. Um, <laughs> speaking of play buttons, I want to talk to you about YouTube because yeah. there's an obvious, you're missing from YouTube, dude. Yeah, you you kind of uh, you you got a million. Subs this is something I asked Dale um, recently. I was like, "Did you hit a million subscribers?" I did. Yeah, we like broke. The, you broke the internet with the launch of my uh, channel. I think it was like, I think it was. I don't know. The first week we hit like six hundred thousand. Oh my god! Subs, dude. and then I think it was two and a half months to a million or something. But it happened so fast. I got my gold play button before my silver play button. Oh, Duh. I don't know how or why, but the gold came first and then the silver. I didn't think I was going to get the silver and I was like kind of bummed. Yeah, everybody trying to do YouTube right now is probably furious. Oh, I'm, that, that's, I'm sure. That's brutal. It was a big launch. And had you kept going, you probably would have surprised me. Oh, easily. Your ideas, everything was easily. just, just taken over. My, my, my views were just like crushing. We would have been on Dale Atwood podcast right now. <laughs> yes. For sure. God. So, so why? What happened? What happened? Uh, Tell me. Actually, that. so is this, is this one of those things where you you get something you don't appreciate it so much as earning it, right? Because you were you were truly given I, a, a million subscribers out the gate. I think it was. I think it was more like there might have been a part of that because obviously, if you started at zero and you hit a million, there's no way you're stopping. Like, I, you, I agree. If you worked your way up to that, you already you're in love with it, and mm -hmm. like. You're doing exactly what you want to do. Yeah. Whereas for me, it was like, it was like taking on a third job. It was like taking on a third, fourth mm -hmm. job. So it wasn't so much fun and love. It was work to create videos. At a certain point, it became work. I think, Interesting. I think after that year one, it became work. I, I went from like once a week to every other day trying to like 
milk that algorithm, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it just beat me to death. It worked me over. And actually, I shouldn't say that. A lot of what happened, and for the record, I never stopped filming. I just switched platforms. Mm. So um, Arctic Tube, it's a little website from Antarctica. I've been <laughs> uploading to there for the last five years. Oh. I'm the number one uploader in Antarctica. Let's go, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty popular. I'd be surprised <laughs> if there's not a big Antarctica YouTuber. I got seven penguins who watch <laughs> daily. So you get this great big channel um, that everybody dreams to, uh, literally people dream to have that. Yeah. Um, and then you're you're also crushing it in, uh, in the rope business. Yeah. Uh, dominoes, the plastic extrusions, the manufacturing, yeah. and you just felt burdened by YouTube. Uh, no, it actually wasn't that. Let me, I guess, let me start at the beginning. And that is, I always liked making videos. Mm. You and I have been making videos mm. forever. I've always been like, I'd say right-hand man, never, never lead man going into any of this. I was always the guy like, hey, let me throw some special effects in there or yeah. let me come up with something funny or, you know, just ideas. Um, and we've done that since little up. So before, before I got here, I was like, oh, I've yet to see video on the television screen. I was like, I'm going to change that. I'm going to find some old video footage mm. from when we were kids. And I spent hours <laughs> over the weekend going through all this footage to try to bring something into play. Didn't bring anything. Uh, commitment. But no, I want commitment. Like we're both in a lot of the videos, Yeah. but it just... None of it felt right. Hmm. And like for people not watching the video side and only on audio. Yeah, it's like, a little weird. Kids' videos aren't exactly the greatest to listen to, I don't think. We're getting more video now. I'm pumped. Uh, yeah, we're on video right now. We're correct? on Spotify video now. We're on uh, YouTube. There's, there's lots of ways to watch uh, the video. Um, Dale, do you remember you guys would always film together, film your sketches. You were the right-hand man. Do you remember – the video where you first met me when we started dating. Oh, I think so. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember pulling up mm. to Chase's apartment more than anything because we're in like Roman's van and he's like, hey, don't freak out, but I'm kind of dating this girl. <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, I was like, we're cool. Like, <laughs> of course. I don't, and then at that point, I'm like, all right, I'm not sure what to expect. And then I think it know. was more, hey, Dale, there's this very young girl in there. <laughs> I'm kind of seeing her. Don't freak out. That's probably what it was. I was probably yeah. giving you the heads up, like, um, she's not actually an adult yet. <laughs> it's like terrible, dude. Sounds terrible, but yeah, yeah I was giving you the pre-warning. Yeah. So from the, from that, what I remember was uh, you guys were like filming in the living room, and it was a tiny apartment, so we were like all back in the bedroom, and I was like, oh, I have to go pee so bad. So I went and shut the bathroom door, and all I hear is quiet on set from Dale. And I was like, oh, oh my, my God, gosh. this guy hates me already. Yeah, and that would have been like a total joke. Like, Yeah. Right. I think at the time, uh, Christian Bale had thrown his fit on the <laughs> scene at set of Batman. Oh, yeah. Why are you wrecking my set? It was probably something like that. Or yeah. I, I don't know. We go, we go way back in this stuff, yeah. way before YouTube. I was always the camera guy. You were the actor. Yeah. And then you'd only make it a certain amount of time before you... I lost interest. You lost interest. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Dale, please. Let's keep filming, bro. Yeah. And it was... Once he was gone, he was gone. It was like wiggling on the floor to just, you know, <laughs> film me. Then. We were pretty young. We were very young. Um, I, yeah. So I guess going back... So I was actually really excited to start a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And like even before you were like, Dale, you should really start a YouTube channel. Like I was like, man... You know, this is cool. I'm already filming with him a mm -hmm. lot, right? Um, you know, should I should give this a shot. So it was actually really exciting, and I had a lot of fun. And I still miss a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Like, the creativeness of, like, hey, I got this stupid idea. Let's put it on a video and see what people think. Yep. That's the part of it I miss. The mm -hmm. work side of it's not the part. Like, staying up till 3 in the morning mm -hmm. editing. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was cool for a while. I'd crank up some 80s hair metal and, you know, edit all night and burn my candle at both ends, you know, <laughs> running multiple businesses, a young family. Yeah. Um, it was good. I think, I think all the steps leading up to me quitting YouTube, I never planned to quit. Mm -hmm. So I did this every other day upload for a long time. Like I was working it. I felt like you I were. was hustling. You were in it. Um, and then your YouTube Red Show 
popped up. Mm. Like, hey, can you be a part of this? I'm like, yeah, great. Sounds fun, you know, do a bunch of cool stuff. I think that show was the main keystone factor of me having to take a step back. That show mentally beat me to death. Everyone on the back end of that show, they were the they were the hardest people to work with in my life. Like it was difficult. It was difficult. Props props to them though because they were coming from TV and we were coming from YouTube. There was this massive clash. There's no way anyone on that set was coming from anything credible. No, I, I think I think that it was just a two worlds colliding. I clashed heavily with them. It affected my channel big time. Um, that was the first time we saw my channel take a big step backwards, yeah. focusing on, on, the, on the Red Show. Um, and it, it was just a lack of uh, content. I couldn't show certain things all day. We cracked a quarter million glow sticks. I couldn't show that. Yeah. Right. So it, what was I showing that day? It was, it, was, it was everything that I did when I was grinding YouTube would take away from the daily vlog. Mm -hmm. So it became like this obsession of just daily vlogging. Anything that came near it, cut my viewership yeah and, and red did that and you worked hard on that channel there's a funny story about um i'll let you tell it but, but basically we had dale fly out to i don't even remember what state right it depends which episode i'll know what you're talking about when you say well, it. well basically you worked your butt off to find this family a boat we, <laughs> we were buying a family a boat arkansas right? Was it Arkansas? It was Arkansas. So Dale flies out and he's calling me with all these boats. They're junk, junk, junk. I'm like, we need to buy him a brand new boat. That's the yeah. only way. And uh, you had you had you had run-ins with all kinds of people trying to find boats. Crazy like, people. Crazy people. Um, the, the 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 best part of the story is, and this happened a lot when we gave things away. The the family ends up beautiful episode. We, <laughs> we we blessed this family with this brand new boat, which are fishermen. Like they love fishing. Yep. We filled the boat with fishing gear and tackle, and it was epic. And then the <laughs> – Yeah, so, so I, I, I had very little time anyway, so I fly out for the show, mm -hmm. and they're like, we need to find a boat for 2500 bucks, Which ain't going to happen. And, like, from day one, I'm like, you cannot buy a nice boat for $2,500. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So they got me going out looking at these pontoons that need bulldozed. Like, they need thrown – into the garbage yeah, can. Yeah, there's holes in the floor. And um, the the guy, there was only one other guy with the show with a camera. You know, he's filming everything. He's like, you know, just trying to make this happen. And like, these boats are just destroyed. I was like, there's no way you're giving this away. And he's like, just, can you act? Can you like, can you like make it seem nice? Like go over the good points That's of it. impossible. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I, I try to shine a turd <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, it don't look good, but you know, maybe we can clean it up, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, all this stuff. And eventually after the third boat, like there's some weird crap happening. I call you, I'm like, they're trying to buy these guys boats that are like, they need heaved <laughs> into the yeah. landfill. And you're like, all right, let me make some calls. <laughs> and we go, I, I bet I was, I bet we were 20 hours that day, mm. like going back and forth to all these crazy yep. houses, like. These and, were nice boats and, and people selling them. And also, one thing that we had to always keep in mind was we were at a level of success on YouTube that the viewer expected us to buy certain things for people, right? Oh, my if I, gosh. If I bought that family the $2,500 pontoon, yeah. it would be an insult. It's a slap right? in the face. So to me, it was always about making sure not only is the person getting the gift happy, but the viewer respects that we did something big <laughs> at the level we were at. It was, you know, we had, we had, a uh, we had shoes to fill. Yeah. Right? We couldn't, we couldn't give them crap. Right. So yeah, you make a phone call to someone higher up than these people. You're like, all right, we're buying them a new boat. And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. <laughs> I mean, we just wasted a day and a half, yep. but thank goodness. And then, yeah, they sold the boat like what, a couple weeks after that? Well, the, the, <laughs> the, the comedy came in because they get the boat, they're in love, they're crying. Um, and then we needed some voiceovers. If you guys know how TV works, sometimes you have to go back and you have to get some voiceovers or reactions or whatever the shot was. As soon as they called for that B-roll, voiceovers, they sold the boat yeah. already. Yeah. It was gone. It was hocked. And and you can't really blame them. No, it I, makes I, perfect the sense. The best gift for a lot of, of people is, is the cash. I yeah. just did a truck giveaway. They picked the cash. They didn't even want the truck. Yeah. So. 
Well, there's insurance, there's trailer, there's tags. That's right. Boating's a nightmare That's now. That's right. There would be fees with a free boat. Yeah. Was, uh, you can't blame them, but it was funny that we spent all that yeah. time. And we learned a lot because moving forward, a lot of the things we gave away. Um, I, I know to <laughs> date, we gave the police department a brand new Can-Am, fully wrapped. Yeah. Uh, it was sick. We also bought the fire department a brand new truck, wrapped. They both still have them. They both still use them daily. Uh, so those are two gifts that have stuck around. I, I'm cool. pretty sure I heard that they ditched the Can-Am. Nope, it's there. Really? Yeah, I just talked to them uh, this weekend. They okay. Just, they had it at the fair. That's cool. Very uh, cool. Yeah, so that was episode one. I, I feel like it was a disaster. And like the fun part would have been like working with you. But mm -hmm. my part in the TV show, I was always flying out early, like doing all this pre-setup stuff mm -hmm. and like, Everyone on set's like, yo, Roman just did a backflip at Nitro Circus. I'm like, dang it. I'm over here like literally like, I, I don't know. It just wasn't yeah. organized for me. Yeah. Um, you were stuck with the the work part of it. And at the time, yeah. Yeah, you were working. Yeah, and at the time I was like, I don't know. It worked me over. It was very unorganized and chaotic. And like, again, it was kind of what you were saying too. Like I wasn't filming for my channel because I only had so much time. If I were to fly back, I, you know, I had to, catch up on real work at the factories. Yep. Um, Little kids. Yeah. So it wore me out. And uh, that was like, I think we finished filming that like October or like there was like paperwork or something. We were finalizing October. November of 2016 was our trip to the Bahamas. And I always felt awkward. Like before I started filming, you always had something going on. We could come over as a family and kind of enjoy what you were doing. Mm. And then when I had my own channel, it was like, I'm always looking for content. Yeah. Then we were sh you were sharing all your content with me, which was huge. Like your guests would do stuff on my channel. Mm. But I always felt like I was just like biting at all your content. Mm. And it, it never felt right to me. Like Interesting. Like we'd go on vacation. We have a lot of similar mm. tastes. We'd be surfing. I'm like, oh, we need to film this. So like we're both filming the same stuff yeah, at different yeah, yeah. angles or different times. And yeah. I think it was like, it just felt off. So then like, I at some points it'd be like, hey, Roman's got something going on, but I need to film. Yeah. So then like, we weren't spending time together. And I was like, it's just, it's just off. I know what you mean. And at the same time, you know, I have multiple factories running that I'm being pulled in every direction. So it's like, I was shortchanging everything. I was staying up super late not putting my kids to bed. I had a young family. I yeah. was I was working, you know, all day full time for a factory and like it it kind of wore me out. So Bahamas, it was the Thanksgiving Bahamas trip. Mm. I remember was our last upload, I believe. Epic trip. And I I finished my episode and I'm like, "You know what? I'm going to take 3 days off. I'm going to take 3 days." <laughs> right? 3 days goes by and I'm just like Wow, what a weight off my taste, shoulders. He tasted the blood. Right. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, two weeks. I'm going to just like collect myself. Mm. Two weeks. Two weeks go by. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to film something. I go to grab cameras. My one camera was like destroyed. So I was like, ah, I really don't want to film. It's not focusing right. It's not doing this right. I go to my backup camera. Won't even turn on. My GoPros are like shot. Like all my camera equipment was shot. So I'm like, crap, I need to order camera gear. And at the time, it might've been like a few thousand bucks yep. to like get everything new. Yep. And I was like, eh, you know what? I'm just going to wait a week. And like, it just kept progressing. <laughs> like, then it was a month. I was like, all right, I'm going to start uploading. And then I think after like that month and a half, I was like, I think I'm done. Wow. I didn't, see, I didn't know any of that. I didn't, I didn't know that you were... Gonna and come I, back in three days. Gonna come back in a week. Yeah, I never. I honestly never planned on quitting. Once you once you broke the broke them cuffs, dude. You were just a free bird. It it felt so good for a long time, and then there was like this almost this guilt because I was handed this huge channel, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, I did enjoy it. No. I was like, there'd be videos I want to make. Like, right? You were I making had, cool videos. I too, had dude. idea books with yeah. like. 20, I should have brought them mm. with like all my un- I could have stole them. Filmed ideas. Eh, some of them were like impossible, which is why they didn't get filmed. Um, yeah, so I still had all these ideas. And then like, as I was doing stuff, I was like, I would love to film this yeah. and put this up. People should see this or whatever. And I'm like, ah, but 
you know, after this long, you know, I then after like, I don't know, I think after three months, I was like, I was scared if I uploaded, no one's gonna watch. It's been too long. You know uh, what I mean? Like no, it, it would have probably been your biggest video. It's it's yeah. not gonna send out, you know, it, it's the algorithm's mm. broken. And at that same time, YouTube was like annihilating views, mm. annihilating subscribers. That was like, what do you guys call it? The uh adpocalypse. Adpocalypse, yeah. subscriber apocalypse. That's a real thing. Yeah, so that was like right at the same time. And then from there, I was just like, man, I don't know if I can come back. And then I felt if I did, like, I'd be working every weekend trying to put a video together. Yeah, it just wasn't in your passion. It wasn't in your love. I think it was. You have to really love it. I think I was, but <laughs> I was recommitting yeah. to the businesses and to my family. Um, yeah, you had you had pre obligations. Yeah, when, and when I when I found YouTube, I was I didn't have any obligations. It was like this or nothing. Yeah, and it it, it <clears throat> needed it. You know, there was a lot of things not being done. It was suffering, like. Everything was rolling, but it wasn't growing. Mm -hmm. Like, like you need that passion in the businesses. You need that person in there who is driving it and pushing new ideas through. Yep. And that is, I am that person yes. for those businesses. You are. Um, the, the, you, yeah, you, you gotta. You, passion is what drives all of this stuff. You yeah, know, it'd be you like find you, what you're passionate at. It'd be like if you hired three camera guys and you were like, "Hey, I'm just gonna take this month off." Like, their ideas may be great, but they're not going to be your vision they're well, not going to be what you nobody loves your business more than you yeah and and to find that person is yeah it probably happens out there but it's funny because when now that i'm not daily blogging i i constantly think about how annoying i must have been when i was daily vlogging like legit i think about it all the time one i don't know how we ever did it now I look back, how do we daily, how do we do that? Machine. Machines. You, you would set priorities. You'd be like, hey, I got to edit. No, there was nothing else. I got to leave. Else. I got to edit. There was nothing else. Yeah. It was YouTube 24-7. Yeah. There was birthdays I missed. There was life, real life. 100%. That I chose to do YouTube instead of life. Yeah. And now that I'm choosing more life, uh, I think about all the time how annoying I must have been with that camera. At birthday parties and at family <laughs> events and at, I mean, you name it, I was filming everything. Everything. And it, God, it must have been terrible. I used to joke around, like behind the scenes, they were called the million view sweats. And like when, <laughs> when you hit a certain point on your channel, um, I'd be like, oh no, everyone's getting the million view sweats. Cause he'd be like, where's my camera? And everyone's like straightening their <laughs> hair, hair ready, brushing yeah. their clothes, like, like making sure there's nothing on the tables or anything. And I'm like, oh, a million view sweats is real. You <laughs> That's know? And, hilarious. And, That's hilarious. I think that um Or like if you would come over to my house, my house is always trashed. I had yeah. young kids. Yep. I'd be like, Roman's coming over. Gotta clean. We gotta clean. Well, we were the same way. We were the same way. It's like uh, we're about to roll. Let's clean up the kitchen and well, the house. Well, we didn't and... start daily vlogging until we moved into the new house because our old house was Oh, I was embarrassed. Wreck. I was yeah. embarrassed. You would never film well, I think, if it was messy, right? I anything. think that was a major thing with me filming with my own home is it was always clean. And if it wasn't, it was like, hey, we got to film. Okay, spend an hour cleaning before you even turn the camera on. Uh-huh. Because it's like, my kids are like cats. <laughs> if there's one clean room or clean something, like that's where everyone goes to play. And then yeah. they just leave everything in their wake. Yeah. Well, it becomes a show. It becomes a business. And, yeah. you know, you turn it into a... You know, for us, it really was a reality show. It was a mm -hmm. sitcom. It was, yeah. uh, you know, a wild experience mixed with family, and and it captivated a lot of people. And now I truly don't know how I ever did it. I think about it all the time. And once you taste life, like you said, I'll just take three days off. Yeah. Once you taste that life, and the first experience for me was when I was on my daily streak, when I'm when I'm uploading for you know almost two years straight without missing a day. I didn't realize the mental toll I was having until I missed that day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I, I broke the chain. So from there I could miss a day. I could miss a day. Yeah. And tasting that life for a second of like, you know what? I could go to a birthday party and not film it. Film. Right. It slowly, it was a long, Yeah. it was drawn out for me. I think a lot of times it, it's kind of healthy that way. Like it, like when you're young and you have infinite energy and strength to build a business, like what you were saying, you miss birthday parties, you miss family gatherings, you miss things. You know, if you could look at a chart of mm. 
I'd be sad. Wealth, growth, you, you'd be like this, you know, you're, you're grinding, you're missing stuff here. Maybe it's not successful, but it's paying massive dividends later. Mm -hmm. So now you're up here and you're catching the tail ends of all that success. So mm -hmm. now in your age, you can spend time with your family. Ironically. Whereas if you were, if you just stayed eight to five and mm -hmm. you didn't push really hard to grow something huge young, yeah. you know, you'd always be busy. Yeah, you'd have an, you'd, you no know, eight to five. Now so you I, can like make your own I, schedule anytime you want. I try to explain to my kids often that uh, it, it's, a, it's not often that uh, a father and a mother get to be home all day. Yeah. Right. So I'm explaining to my kids that, you know, we're home a lot now. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I missed a lot of time with uh, Noah and Kane. Yeah. And the new kids just see me always. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what you're explaining is I grinded so hard that I built this nest, this comfort. Yeah. Um, so now I get to, I get to catch up on more time than most parents get to do. It's such a gift. Yeah. Uh, very blessed to be able to do that. But it's hard to explain to a kid that, hey, like you and I grew up, mom and dad was at work always. Yeah. Right? And whatever time they got when they were home, that's what we got with them. Yeah. Um, so we were scrappy though. Yeah. We, we didn't need we didn't need people watching us. We, we did it. Dude, we were um we were in do you remember how old we were when we were walking on the Vegas streets alone? We were young. Um you definitely looked like a kid, but I feel like I might have been 14. 14? No, I wasn't. We were that there, old. we were there younger. I wasn't that old. But we thought it was the coolest thing. They would hand out like nude cards. You have Just all these to girls. Anyone. Yeah, they'd hand kids. <laughs> so me and Dale would on the streets collecting these new cards, dude. And we're like, you can't do that nowadays. You can't just let your they, kids go off. I don't know. I, I, I no, it's not safe. It's I, it's a different time. It's a different day and age. But Dale and I were definitely raised to be we're go getters. We're scrappy. Go getters, dude. Flea yeah. markets and Vegas and nudie cards. Yeah, like <laughs> you, you could drop us off anywhere and we would survive. You know what I mean? Like. We had we had good. Uh, there was no such thing as a helicopter mom when we were kids. Like, what is a helicopter mom? That's like, like you're always hovering. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like the mom. That's always, Brit. You're a helicopter mom. <laughs> yeah. So families that are <laughs> home all day, like imagine your kids trying to go out on their own. Like they've had you guys to answer questions. Yeah. Always, and your kids aren't alone. You know, my kids uh, have my wife as well all day. But it's like. They need time away from they us, do. parents. Like, they need to grow. They need that freedom. Yeah, they need to make choices on their own. For better or worse, they need to make those choices to empower them. Like, they need to say, hey, I did that, and it worked out fine. Yeah, we were also, we were also right before this insanely addictive computer games and yeah. iPads and cell phones. And uh, if you were gone, there was no way to get a hold of us. If we took <laughs> off on our bikes, we're gone until gone. we come back. Yep. Uh, so now you, you know, I can see Noah 24 seven on my phone. I can see my family. I, we know where each other are at all times. And it's yeah. like, there is this intrusive part of that that takes away a little bit of your freedom. Less freedom. Yeah. It makes Le you feel um, a little. Independence, less independence for sure. Yeah. So, and it's like a lifeline. It like, is. and I do it all the time. Like growing up, you had to remember facts and stats. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, you don't got to remember. I just. You know, look it up. Google yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, oh, what, 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 what were, like, what was that number or whatever? Like, you know, boom, done. We were definitely in a in a great era to to be raised as kids. I think I, I love just having a bike and no freaking phones ringing all the time. And yeah, now you can I'm, still do that. You can. Well, but, now everyone I, wants I, to I would, be you. I would have to <laughs> detox. I would have to detox from it. I would have to get used to not checking my Twitter feed and my, you know, I'd have to actually. Go to rehab. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's a, a real thing. It's a real addiction. Yeah, I've heard that. It's a real addiction. And because that's where my career is built. Do you get the uh, phantom text vibrations in your pocket where you're like, oh, someone just texted me and you look and there's nothing? That's my phone. That's not. That's I, my phone. It might be. I mean, I get them. I've, I've, I've had that before, for sure. I'm like, I swear my phone just yep. vibrated. That's called a phantom? I yes. mean, that's what I call it. I don't I know like if that's that a name, thing, dude. but it's like you go to, you're like, Hang on, I'm getting a text. I'm getting a call. Nothing. Yeah, yeah definitely. Make you look like an idiot, but yeah, it happens all the time. So that now, so I went to a conference like 
four months ago, and there was this uh, doctor there who said that if you carry your cell phone in your pocket for men, it reduces your sperm count by 75% and does all other, you know, it's- Takes your testosterone down. Yeah, and it's uh, it's radiation. Dang. So like yeah. after that, I'm like leaving my phone, like if I'm working, I leave it in my office or, you know, in a bag, or if I'm driving, I put it in the seat beside me. But then I get these phantom texts. And I'm like, what the crap? You, I think it's just your phone saying, hey, you've you, been away from me too yeah. long. It, it, it's been, Check me. It's been 15 minutes. Like, why aren't you checking? Get your endorphins going. Oh, yeah, exactly. Interesting. Dude, well, it certainly hasn't stripped any of my uh, sperm count uh, over the years. Maybe. Maybe you'd have quintuplets without oh, it. Oh, God. Can you imagine? <laughs> I don't know. You guys make really – healthy, pretty kids. So yeah, well, we had, as an uncle, I'd enjoy them. We had a phenomenally <laughs> rough week with a sick, uh, sick knocks. Yep. Um, brutal, brutal, brutal. Brittany posted on her Instagram, uh, high fever. First time for me and Britt experiencing with any of our kids, a seizure. Knox had a seizure, quit breathing, no heart rate, turned blue. We're talking the worst thing. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. This was terrifying yeah. and your brain goes to the worst places immediately yeah. 911 walked uh, luckily Britt knows cpr she immediately started cpr and and he came back and uh we spent the night in the hospital this week and uh it's crazy yeah oh also as this episode's going live uh it's Brittany and i's anniversary wait happy anniversary this oh yeah this is going up this wednesday yeah happy Congrats. anniversary how yeah. many years don't say anything <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's four yeah. Four. Wow. Four. Seems longer than that. Well, Four years married. We were together nine years before. I know, but man. In Four Hawaii? Years. We got to get to Hawaii more often. I yeah. know. We dude. need like an anniversary which, 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 by the way, man, you are my number one holdup to still live in Ohio. So you're <laughs> the problem. You uh, tell me when and where, and we're bouncing. I've got. And of course, uh, and of course, you know, dad's going to go with you. It, man, if you think of like trees and the roots mm. with these factories we've built we have installed deep roots into ohio you can't just pick up and I know. move i know other i mean if i didn't have the factory i'd be gone tomorrow so are we in ohio for life i don't know what are we gonna do about this problem i don't know i'm thinking uh Maybe machines, uh, you know, AI will take over the Just manufacturing, and I'll go to Florida. Dude, we're or... gonna be we're gonna be three hundred years old. Now. I know. I won't be able to paddle into waves by the time I figure it out. I'll be like, all right, we're moving. Uh. Yeah, we we constantly talk about actually moving out of Ohio. And it's just you and dad and family are our roots because yeah. with YouTube and podcasting, I can create that anywhere, which is another gift, yeah. another blessing. But with family, those are our roots, our anchors. Yeah, that's you. That's dad. Uh, and that's the factories. Too. Well, I, th I think uh, right before, right before the whole lockdown things, you guys were going to spend the whole winter in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yes, and like it was serious. Yeah, no, I, no like, I like had our house. Yeah, we were I was, my car we were, ready yeah. to check out. Yeah, so I was like, I think this is going to happen, and like I was so jealous. <laughs> I was like, dang, that sounds so incredible. I'd send you pictures, dude. Yeah. We so, had an extra bedroom. You could but at the same come time, stay. I was like so proud. Like, that's amazing. He can go anywhere in the world, work doing whatever he's doing, and you know, go go someplace nicer. Yeah. Ohio is quite literally trying to kill us all. Well, just know that I'm still here because of you. That hurts me even it maybe should. a little more. It should. <laughs> I hope you realize the, the, how serious I am. Oh, maybe we can get you a cardboard cutout of me <laughs> and like the family. Yeah, I just I'm glued to family. You know, dad and uh, the yeah, kids. I think that's and, why we're all stuck here. Yeah, I mean, we're, it's like, it's, and even if you do get away, it's like once your family gets old enough, like you gotta come back and help, and then it's like you have to escape again. Yeah. I, I talk to a lot of people because I've been interested in moving someplace with clear ocean. Waves, you know, clear water. It's it's my passion. I it's, love it. It's, it's uh, you do as well. And it's like everyone I know who's like, oh yeah, I, I lived in Florida before. I, I was right on the water, or whatever. And I'm like, why'd you move? Oh well, I had family that got sick. I came yeah. up to take care of them. Never left, right? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I see that. Uh, you know, even if you can get there, it's probably not going to be permanent. Um, especially because, like in Hawaii and all these like super high end places. If you can survive, your kids can't. Everything's so expensive. It's tough. Yeah. It is tough. Most of the families in Hawaii have to move out. Like they grow up in paradise and then they can't afford 
to stay there. Well, also, I can't think of a place more distracting. It would be very hard to go work when you could go surf. Right? Yeah, Unless but for me, I just start a surf business and then work is surf or work is boogie boarding or scuba diving or spear fishing. That would be business. If you could capitalize on what you were passionate about. If you enjoyed surfing, you could capitalize on it. Um, Jamie O'Brien, great great example. Yeah. Absolute legend. And he's made a living doing what he loves. Uh, but that's not for everybody in Hawaii. Yeah, not everyone can do that. That's crazy. There, there's people that might have been the same talent of surfing as him but couldn't do the traveling, couldn't do the touring or whatnot. I'm not taking anything away from Jamie. He's incredible. In fact, super humble guy. I, uh, I've i almost never met anyone in my life who was so inviting. Yeah. It was like you were family from the second- Nothing but love. He met you. It, it was, yeah. uh, he yeah. was an eye opener going with you to yeah. meet him. And like, he treated us like gold. Fantastic guy. Speaking on um, health. And Ohio's trying to kill everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know how deep you want to get into this, but I, I, not long ago, dad came over and uh, freaked me out. He gave me a scare of my life. And he basically just said, hey, your brother's not doing well. <laughs> and I was like, what does that mean? He's like, I, I don't know, but it's not good. Yeah. And I couldn't, we were, we were leaving for a church activity and I could not focus on anything. I was like a zombie. I was like, I have to get a hold of Dale. I don't know if he wants to talk about this, but there's some serious health issues going on with my brother yeah. and I don't know about it. Yeah. And why does dad know about it and not me? Um, and, and I don't know what kind of details you want to get into, but you've been fighting some serious things and, and you found some type of link to something I never heard of. Yeah. And, and explain this, explain this. Cause you're okay. going to, you might save lives. Yeah. I, I, very, very, very well could. Um, yeah, so I'm just not feeling great, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, man, what is what is going on? I just don't feel great. Um, so like I have blood work done. I'm getting checked out. And I feel pretty good. Like I'm still working like an animal. I'm still – I'm doing everything I need to do. But then when I get home, I'm like, beat. Mm. Um I'm just not feeling myself. So all this stuff gets done. And this doctor's like, you have all these signs of radiation poisoning. And I'm like, how's that possible? Radiation poisoning. Your phone was it? in your pocket. Yeah, my phone. <laughs> my phone was in my pocket, maybe. Uh, and I don't use a microwave, right? So I'm like, he's like, he's like, you have radon in your house. Or you spend a lot of time in a house with radon in it. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Everything I'm saying is you know, this is just my opinion or my view of this. Um, so I'm like, oh, geez, this is scary, right? Like uh -huh. I had heard about it. So like four weeks before I had these appointments lined up, I keep hearing these radio ads, check your house for radon. And I'm like, I'm like, I should do that. You know, like just, yeah, sound, just thinking about it. It sounds like some bogus sales thing. Check yeah, your and, house for radon. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, it, it, the state, the state ads, you know, like, they're like, you know, check your paint for lead, you know, yeah. don't yeah. go out in the sun during the day. Yeah. So I like take everything they say with a grain of salt. Right. Um, so I'm like, all right. So I order a company to come out, they do the radon test and sure enough, there's radon in my house. And I'm like, crap, like this is real. Mm. Right. And, um, yeah, I was suffering, uh, some weird health issues and, so I get it remediated, um, which basically, it, it was so cheap. By the way, the test is like 100 to 150 bucks. For they, somebody to come out and check your a house. A professional company, they come out, they set up these sensors out through your house, and, and it looks like a speaker. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is, but it tests your house. And at the same time I ordered that test, I was like, I'm just going to look online. I'll buy my own. You know, I want to make extra sure we don't have it. <laughs> yep. Um, and you can buy these tests on Amazon. The good ones are like 150 bucks. You can have them next day. Mm. So I bought one of those at the same time. So the, when I already had my unit running by the time the company was out, and it only took them like a couple of days. Sure enough, my house has radon in it. I get it remediated. I'm going through all this stuff um, to kind of fix the issues. Yeah. Um, and you're having real issues. Yeah. Your skin's peeling. Your yeah. My eyes are twitching. Like I'm. I'm not doing great. My joints are terrible. Mm. Like I, I ache, I hurt. Yeah. Um, it's all like these little nuances that just drive me crazy all mm. day, right? 
Um, so then I start looking into radon immediately. Like, what is this stuff? Is it, is it real? Yeah. So long story short, I start telling everyone I know, like, check your house for radon. This stuff is real. It's serious. And a lot of the older people, family members, aunts, uncles, they laugh. They're like, oh, no, radon. <laughs> yeah, to me, it sounds like something just totally bogus. Yeah, totally. And, and basically, it's a radioactive gas that comes out of the ground pretty much everywhere. It's part of our life. But Ohio specifically. Central like the, the, Ohio. The north, it goes from like the north of the United States down through Ohio and back up. More northern than anything. And it's in the dirt. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. coming out of – so especially when you build a house and you put that basement in, yeah. uh, you're basically in the radon levels. Yeah, so any cracks in your basement, it's coming up through those cracks. Like if you have a sump pump, it's coming up through the sump pump. Um, and normally I think the number is like a half – I forget the term. It's like half picoliter per – it's some sort of volume thing. It, it's weird. Like if you're walking on the sidewalk, you're breathing some small portion of it. Like a tiny you, bit. Yeah. A and not everybody's affected by it, correct? I think everyone's affected by it. So the but, second leading cause of lung cancer in the United States is radon poisoning. So I don't know if I was kicked out of class during radon day, but I never heard of this in my life. Me neither. Why? I don't know. Uh, Why? I, yeah, I, I no. really don't know. And like we have, uh, I have fam we have family members who are firefighters and some of them never heard about any of this. And like they're trained in gases, they're trained in like all this stuff. They never heard training on it. Um, and it's not new. Like they've been doing tests since like, I believe the sixties on people's homes. And a lot of the feedback I got was like, oh, I don't have a basement, I'm good. Yeah. It, no, you're not good. It well, comes still, up through the crawl space, it comes up through the flat slab. You still laid a foundation. It's everywhere and yeah. it's accumulative. So like, let's say your house only has a little bit coming in. Modern houses are sealed so tight nowadays that it builds and builds oh. and builds. And a lot of people run their AC or heat all year round. They're not opening windows anymore. Uh -huh. They're not getting leaking windows. When we grow up, there'd be ice on the insides of our windows and you could draw in That's it. That's right. Old wooden frames. Yeah, everything and, would yeah. breathe. It would vent. Like, And I think maybe now it's more an issue than ever because homes are built so well and they're like vacuum. You know, they're like jars. We're sitting in jars of radon in Ohio. And um, <laughs> I actually printed it out and I forgot it, but it was a map from the EPA on radon levels. Mm. And they have like, everyone reports the radon levels and it's insanity. Like, yeah, why it, is this not talked about? Why am, isn't am I missing it just something? on, like, why isn't the filtration on every home when you buy it? I don't know because it was only, it's There's only like 1200 bucks. It's 1200 bucks to fix. If you're building a home already, 1200 is not anything that's make or break you building a home, right? right? It's, it's, it's part of the build. Why aren't every house, especially in central Ohio, where radon is through the roof? Yeah. Since then, I know we've put a full system on our home. Uh, about every family member and friend has added the system. Yeah. So every – so I bought the device off Amazon. Yeah. And I've been passing it out. I got one out. too. I've been passing it out. I'm like, hey, test your house. Yeah. Here, it's free. You don't have to spend anything. Everyone's just came back too high. Yep. Everyone's. There hasn't been a single house. And I guess how it works though is like – your house could be super high. Your neighbor's house could have nothing mm. for various reasons I don't know. And it's really weird that it's just not – Well, I'll tell you the side effects of. of this stuff is terrifying because once you told me about it, of course, I went to Google, which probably the worst place to go for any medical <laughs> yeah. reason. Yeah. But this stuff's terrifying. Like, yeah. this, is, this is actually killing people. Yeah, and it's worse than young kids. Mm. And it, immediately my mind's going there too. Ugh. So when we moved into my house, I had a – three and five year old. I'm like, gosh, they've been suffering this, you know? And I'm like, I can't believe I didn't know this and that I didn't solve it, you know, before being a parent, before being a homeowner. Like, why wasn't I told about this? So I even went back on my home inspection and I'm like, you know, we have home inspections. People come in yeah. they make sure the house is safe. No mold, no fungus, no insects, yep. this sort of thing. It's not on there at all. Why not a radon check? So, so then I do some digging and I guess like in 2017, any home loan that's not conventional, it's mandated by the government that it has a radon test. Mm. So FHA loans, VA loans, um, anything non-conventional. I bought my house with a conventional loan. It didn't require the test, so they didn't include it. Got it. Case in point. Hmm. So listen, guys. 
This is something I just cannot believe I never heard of that. Um, tons so, of, so since getting it fixed, have you felt better? Like, have you? I, I think it's, yes. I, I feel like I'm coming back now. It's only been six I, months. Yeah, five, six, six months. months I, 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 I definitely, I have more energy. You, um, look, you look a lot better. You I, look frustrated and. It's wintertime too. It happened at wintertime. Wintertime kills me in Ohio. Yeah. Yes. Nonstop rain and sleet. It's and not like, enough depression meds I'm on like, the planet. I'm like, just snow. And it's just rain yeah. all winter long. So when we move in? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm on Realtor and Zillow all the time. And I'm like, deals yeah, are you coming. Got the, you got the, the pop-ups. I do. Like, yeah. So I have areas in South Carolina. I have areas in Florida. Yeah, and it's like a too. new home has been listed. Us too. Mm -hmm. It just gives you a little hope, you know? Yeah. And, and Ohio has its perks. It does. Yeah. It's a cost of living yeah. here is very, uh, you know, as a YouTuber that built wealth, Ohio's great. Yeah. We can live very well here for less money than yeah. Hawaii and California. And now, not our area. Our area has just been like creeping up. Our up area up is up. Like, Yeah. I mean, it's, we're turning into those high end areas. Yes. Um, but still, we have yards and. That's right. Yeah. We have, we have land, things yeah. like that. Um, so, so, I guess to sum it up, if you live, like just Google radon in map Miami. of the United States. And if you're in those red and orange zones, which 90% of the populations are, call your radon specialist in your area or order a kit, have it tested and fix the problem. Like you're only doing yourself injustice. Like, yeah. And you might be feeling like crap and not knowing why it could be it. Yeah. And like this, could be it. this doctor was saying like non-smokers, lung cancer, it's radon. Like he can he can bet money on it every wow. single time. It's the number one cause of lung cancer and deaths. It's it's horrible. And we don't even talk about it. Mm -hmm. or, or I'm missing something. I don't know. The people that are, maybe we're not listening yeah, to. Yeah, maybe yeah, that's true. <laughs> we we caught you guys today. You know I know about radon on yeah. accident. Mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome. That's yeah. scary, man. Scary stuff. It is. You think uh, you know, same thing with Knox having a seizure. Um, the paramedics showed up and they they really put us at ease with telling us that this is exactly what they expect in his age group. So they have a seizure, they shut their bodies off completely, the temperature drops, and then they kick back on. Yeah. It's like shutting off a car to cool it down or resetting a computer. Um, and then they they didn't even really suggest go to the hospital. He's fine. Yeah. But Britt was like, I want to go to the hospital, make sure he's fine. Mm -hmm. the paramedics were like, does he need to go or do you need to go? Right. Yeah. So they were so confident that this was incredibly normal at a year and a half. Yeah. And we got to the hospital, same thing. The nurses, the doctors said, this is incredibly common. There's nothing to worry about. He's got a little viral infection. He got wow. too hot. Another thing I never heard of in my life. Yeah, that's but crazy. But it's, it's not him getting too hot because it can happen. It can happen at a low fever. And we yeah, know a lot of people with a lot of kids, above. by the way. We come from a big family. Well, yeah. she put a post on her Instagram. Yeah. And – I can't tell you how many people I know close to me that hit me up. My kid did the exact same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My friend's kid did the exact same. I think another thing that would have been really easy uh, becoming a parent saying, hey, yeah. this just may happen. so you know. This is what to do. There's a chance that this happens and they're going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, even the doctor said even if she didn't do CPR, he would have come back. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so scary too. Like oh, when you guys sent that text out, my stomach just like dropped. I'm like, oh, crap. And then I kept reading. I'm like – like, I couldn't get to the end of the paragraph soon enough. Dude. Yeah. And I was, like, instantly, like, crap. Honestly. Uh, Scariest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, and your brain just life. instantly goes yeah. to the worst place. When you see your boy limp, eyes limp, body limp, uh, you just assume you lost them. Yeah. Hard. And I think Horrible. speaking on what you just said, like, where are these people giving us this knowledge? It's only in the last hundred years that – America has had the wealth that when you're 18, you move out, you get your own place. We used to live at home with our parents and grandparents. And that's where that tribal knowledge came from. Mm -hmm. It's like we learn from our family members. And now that may not be getting passed down. One, because we don't want to hear it as a teenager. Like, absolutely. I, yeah, I know everything. Like, yeah. I I'm good. We're good. Good point. And we're all moved out. We have apartments, we have homes. Like, we don't want to hear it. We're we're successful on our own. You that know what I mean? That is very true. We're, we're we're stubborn. We got a lot of pride. We're 
So, yeah, I could see uh, my teacher bringing up radon and be like, dude, take a hike. Bro. Take <laughs> I'm going to film videos. I look great, dude. Uh, so, yeah, it could be on me, but. Could be. I guarantee there's listeners that have never heard of this, and they're probably like, I'm going to check it out. Yeah. I, I think it'd be silly not to. And yeah. I so, so I wanted to add to the whole seizure thing. After talking to, you know, I, I see a holistic nutritionist. And I'm like, okay, I know she's not giving her kids medicine every two hours to bring their fever down. Like, what are you doing so they're not having seizures every time they have a fever? And she said it's actually a deficiency in vitamin A that they're getting. And that's the fever just takes down all of the the vitamin A in their body. So what she was saying is making sure they're having enough of like the cod liver oil, which meat organs have vitamin A. Yummy. <laughs> Um, I haven't seen liver strips on the kids' menus anywhere yet. <laughs> right? Uh, so, yeah, it's like I, the the medicine's great when you need it to bring the fever down. But every time they have a fever, when if you're just pumping them full of medicine, it's always my yeah. worst fear because that can just wreck their liver. And, and it's their, scary everything. not to give them medicine too because right. the, yeah. they turn always into, that possibility. They turn into those zombies where they just, they're just lethargic. Right, which he had to take a Tylenol. Yeah, yeah. He well, had horrible. taken Tylenol, so it wasn't like. Yeah, that was already active. Like yeah. it was bringing his fever down already. Yeah. yeah this, I guess the the even scarier part with that situation is, they all made it very clear that if a child does that once, they immediately their brain immediately knows. Okay, this works now. And it does. But what it can happen now is is he can do this more with fevers. Yeah. It is his brain already knows? Okay, to cool down, I'm safe. I've already yeah. done this once. Let's do a shutdown. Which to mom and dad, oh yeah, it, it gives you something to look forward to in the middle of the night. It's just right? yeah, freaking, yeah, yeah. And and why is it always the middle of the night? Right. It, it's all. I mean, when I'm sick, <clears throat> nighttime's always the it's, worst. It it's is. Not, like it, like a lot of times, like if you're throwing up, it's like oh, I don't want to get to nighttime. Like you're fine all day, and yeah. the nighttime happens. It's like. The virus demons come out. They know when you need well, rest. The body, and the it's body like, slows down. The heart rate, everything slows. And by the way, like hats off to that EMS guy saying like, you know, you don't need to go to the hospital. Most people would have been like, hey, this is an easy five grand. I'll be honest. Jump, yeah. in, jump in the truck and let's go. Here's something that that I learned. We, uh, you know, I left it up to Britt. Do you want to go? I could see it in her face. We're going. And yeah. I'm dreading it so bad. It's midnight. You know. Roman loves his sleep. We get to, we get <laughs> to children's. And uh, the security guy up front, he said, hey, just so you guys know. And it was about midnight. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, you're not going to be seen until about 9 in the morning. That's insane. And had we take the ambulance, which the guys were like, if you want to run in, we'll take you. Yeah. You go straight in. Yeah. So – Luckily, we weren't in the situation of needing it, but in a serious situation, take the ambulance because yeah. our hospitals are packed. Yeah, like um, for real, it's it's weird. So we left there. We went to another spot, and uh, yeah, we were there till about five in the morning. So and he was fine. And it, it's great. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I I had a seizure when I was a teenager. I remember it clearly. And um, I've never had one again. Yeah. I've had terribly high fevers. Um, Never happened again. So I remember you may be lucky. I remember walking past your bedroom and I think you said mom. Yeah. And I looked at you and you were just starting to shake. Yeah. So I woke up. I was super sick. So we had uh, I actually had a band concert that night and I almost didn't go because I wasn't feeling good. Mm. I went anyway. And after that concert, I was so dead. Like in the car going home, I was just like, I couldn't stay awake. I was just like beat to death. So I instantly go upstairs and go to bed. I wake up. And my legs are like going like this. You can't and I, stop them. I put my hands on my thighs and I grab them. And my arms and legs are just going like this. Mm. And I'm like, what is going on? And I'm pushing harder to try to get my legs to stop. And eventually there's like, I saw, I, I called out. I could see like a shadow going by, which one in a million chances that you were just so happened to walk by. Mm -hmm. And you came in. I don't know what happened after that. I was out. Yeah, you were um, out. You were out. Dad was trying to keep your tongue from. Yeah, he had my biting popsicles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you bit his hand good, but he was trying to keep your tongue out of your throat. I don't know if that's a thing. It is a thing. I remember immediately going and grabbing uh, towels and putting them in water and throwing them like on your head and trying to bring your temp down. Yeah, 
Um, and what's funny is the whole time, so I woke up a few times throughout that, and the whole time I was in your room. Oh, wow. But I wasn't. Yeah. The whole time I was out, and when I would wake up, I was in your room. And like, it took me weeks. Hmm. And I just thought you guys moved me. And then finally I was, That's someone said something. And I was like, wait, what? I was in my wow. room the whole time. But when I was out, I was in your room, which wow. was really weird. Really dreaming. Yeah. So I, I don't know why this just came up, but I've had two really weird things happen in that house with you. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw you behind my door. And I, and I sat up and I said, Dale, what are you doing? And I swear you were standing there. I'm like, what are you doing? And then that was it. It just that is went away behind the door. <laughs> it did not happen just once. That happened twice. That happened twice where you were kind of hiding in my room. Where, was it you or was I, that? If it was me, that was sleepwalk, Dale, <laughs> which I, I've never sleptwalked that I know of. No, no, because you can't, you can't disappear when you sleepwalk. You can't. Maybe I, That's maybe I creepy. tripped on some of dad's mushrooms or something. <laughs> um, I, I, he wasn't doing shrooms at that time. No, my dad was clean <laughs> for us. Uh, he, he, he made it a point to be a perfect examples to us. Yeah. Or try to be. Like as we, we, as we started to age, he, you know, we went from every time we got off that couch, it was since she was up. Grab me a beer. Grab me a beer. Yeah. To no more alcohol, no more smoking. Mom smoked. Dad didn't smoke. Um, and it turned into everything since she was up. Yeah. Then know, it grab me into, everything. Then like, it turned to grab, grab my smoke. guitar, yeah. grab everything. Yeah. 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 I don't know where that came from. I not. think it was like a Jeff Foxworthy skit at one point. Since she was. Since she was. Probably. That's going to be new t-shirts coming soon. Yeah. Since she was. And I, I think um, <clears throat> for me, we it's so weird when, especially for you and me, we grew up without a lot, right? Mm. We got to see with our eyes and we grew up with, you know, you have to save your money up for that. Mm. You have to, you have to earn that. You have to... <laughs> Whereas now it's so easy to spoil these uh, kids. I'm so guilty of it. Uh, we all are. God, it's so, trust me, I think about this all the time. You're right. If we wanted something, we had to earn it. Yeah. Dad, and dad would help us. They, they would provide a way to earn it. Like, yeah. hey, mow the grass, uh, get A's or B's or C's or, you know, there was like these little incentives. But also to dad would money. front. Um, I remember when, I don't know if you guys remember blow guns. Yep. You remember blow guns? No. You put the darts. Boom, you shoot them. We had the greatest business going. So dad, in order to teach us about business, invested in the greatest blowgun collection, all brand new, ready for retail, right? Yeah. But he bought them for us to hustle the flea markets. And we're kids. Yeah. So we're learning how to not only sell rope to people, but we're now, Dale and I have a blowgun business, yeah. which was popping at these flea markets. I was probably nine years old when yeah. we started. Yeah. Maybe eight. So, and by the time we were 11, we were just crushing it. So dad would, he would front yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And then we would pay him his cut from each blowgun. And Dale and I would get a cut for selling them. So we were taught very young how to produce cash, yeah. how to create money. Well, even before that, I don't know if you remember, it only did it a few times, but we would make candles in these old candle bowls yeah. and we'd have yard sales. And we'd do this all without a adult present ever. We yeah. would make the signs. We'd hang them up around town. We'd yep. set up tables in our front yard. We hustled. We'd make a dozen candles or whatever crap we wanted to hustle yeah. and we'd try to make And nobody money. wanted them. They were supporting nah. these kids. Yeah, right? it's like no a lemonade one stand. Them. Although they were probably the best deal. It was like two bucks for a candle like this big. We'd <laughs> melt down all our crayons. Maybe $50. Yeah, now. it'd be like a $50 candle oh nowadays. Oh gosh. Yeah, uh, mom and dad, they were workhorses. But with that wealth, so it also goes back to smoking and alcohol. As a as a young boy, I saw our parents drinking and smoking, fighting, fighting. you know, drinking and fighting. And like it set this standard for me personally, like that is never going to be me. Like I'm not going to touch alcohol. I'm yeah. not going to touch a cigarette. Look what it's doing to every – look mm. at these parents. You were smart. Yeah, like every all our friends' parents were all fighting. They were all drinking, smoking. Everyone did. That's right. And we'd be stuck in these cars filled with smoke uh, everywhere we went. Restaurants. I can I can taste it now. I, I remember uh, 
<laughs> and in dad's original garage where he started his rope factory. Yeah. They would hand crank pieces of rope. I had a Pepsi. <laughs> I took a drink of that Pepsi, not knowing that that Pepsi was mom's ashtray. And it was Pepsi and cigarettes. Oh, dude. my God. And to this, to this day, I can taste it. I can smell it. And you know, everyone oh. who grows up with smoking parents has done that. You're choking, you're coughing. <laughs> it's the first can you see. Boom. Yeah. It's a lot less common now, but uh, that's amazing. And, and to this day, you never drank alcohol. You, yeah, no. You never did it. Mm -mm. You never smoked. You never. Uh, I I have seen you pass out though. I have seen you pass out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only once at a flea market. Uh, mom and dad eventually worked their way up to having a big helium balloon above the tent. Oh, we were the so hottest everyone knew, tent. Everyone knew where the rope was, right? Yep. Go to the balloon. They find the balloon. Yeah. Well, when the show was over, Dale was sucking the helium out of the balloon. Out of a. Eight Massive. foot weather balloon or something. Yeah. I mean, it was just huge, and the the hole's like this big. So one breath is just like you're a little space alien. Yeah, I woke up under the truck. He just, like I passed out, rolled under the truck. <laughs> no one was around. Yeah, I, I woke up. No one was around. I'm like, why am I under the truck? Like time just lapsed. I didn't know what happened. And then sure enough, helium, <laughs> helium bombs. Yeah, uh, which which leads me to the next story that you just recently told me about your boys. Oh my. Gosh, this is wild. I, you can't make this crap up. <laughs> Your kids are wild, Dale. <laughs> you can't all the make stories this I hear, up. I'm just like only Dale's kids. So, well, we have Knox is that kid now. Yeah. We have that kid. It, I, I'm so fortunate. My, I have great boys. Um, like my wife can't stand them on YouTube unmonitored, mm. and then I'll go through their history. You know what I mean? Like I'll look it up and. The stuff they're watching, I could care less about. Like, yes, some of it's like psychotic, but it's clean. It's clean psychoness. Clean you know, it's psychos. Yeah, it's like these gamers and they're making these funny Minecraft Roblox, like they're destroying their apartment or what, whatever the case may be. It's dumb stuff. But we were watching way worse stuff as oh kids. My gosh, like on dial up internet. This well, even before that, like I go back and watch some of the movies that were like classics as kids, and there's like Full nude sex scenes and like all this stuff. And I'm like, my kids aren't watching that stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. That's such a crazy thing. Real quick. I've also seen some of those movies where I'm like, oh, kids, we got to watch this. And yep. there's a nude scene. I'm like, that was not in our version. And I wonder if the TV versions didn't have that. So my mom would always make me leave the room. Would your parents not make you leave the room? They weren't there. No. Now, we, now we, <laughs> we actually, I, I, we're in we, Vegas. We say that a lot, but yeah. our parents were home at night. They were always home. Like we never went overnight. Like unless we were older, we were much older. It, I think, except the one time we were left with the guy from the Bahamas. Yeah, my Danny. mom and dad met a guy in the Bahamas. He ends up coming up to work in the factory, and mom and dad go to a trade show for a week and leave us with this Danny from Bahamas. Danny from the Bahamas, and he was a great guy. I didn't get along with him too much, just because. I'm a very private person. And in our little 750 square foot house, like you were living with this person. Yeah. He's like, sleeping on your couch. He was sleeping on the couch, but it was like a blanket curtain away. Yeah. Our our doors in the house were blankets. Yeah. We didn't have two doors. nails. You hang the blankets. Yeah. That was all the blinds in the house. That was the curtains. Like you want yep. privacy, you put up the blanket. Yeah. <laughs> Which is right. funny. Like that was the door to our room. And the living room was right beside. And me and Roman would take turns after bedtime and peek around the couch when my parents were watching Married with Children or yeah, whatever they were, were trying watching. Trying to get a glimpse of that good good. <laughs> yeah, probably. But uh, yeah, it was it, it was really like crazy. Oh, I got sidetracked. Tell me about your kids. So okay. going back to what they're watching yeah, so, on YouTube. So Turns out they weren't watching anything on YouTube. This happened organically without any influence. So they say. I believe them. I believe them. They're good boys. So we're driving in the car yesterday or the day before. And my kid is like, <laughs> he's like, hey, what is the air in the cans of whipped cream, fluffy whip? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, when you press it and the air comes out. Oh, my gosh. I was like, oh, that's nitrous oxide. And You mean like whippets? <laughs> yeah, like whippets? <laughs> uh, so I'm like, it's nitrous oxide. It's laughing gas. It's like the same thing the dentist gives you to knock you out. 
And my older son's like, wait, what? And I'm like, why? What do you mean? He's like, well, uh, cause Conrad was breathing that air in. And next thing I know, he was sleeping on the floor in my room. Oh my gosh. And I'm gosh. like, all right, stop. What just happened? I'm like, what were you doing? And they're like laughing at this point. They're like, what is it? They're like, what is he breathing? And I'm like, it's laughing gas. You know, like if you go to the dentist and they have to knock you out, they put laughing gas on you. That's what's in the oh fluffy God. whip. So apparently he thought he was just breathing oxygen air. He's having fun with it. He's sucking in air from the whipped cream, probably midnight. Oh my gosh. And just, turns out he passes out. Just getting hammered. I guess. <laughs> they didn't say he was- I can see your two boys upstairs just doing this on I accident. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not a bad parent. Uh, <laughs> who knew a can of Fluffy would become something? You know, it must happen. That must happen all the time. As a kid, you'd be like, oh, there's air. It's so terrible. But yeah, it was laughing gas. So sure. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, like drug addicts use nitrous oxide. I'm yeah. like, you guys are not allowed to breathe this stuff. It's not air. No more whipped cream, period. It's not oxygen. And at this point, they're laughing because like it, it happened so innocently. It was so shocking. Yeah, and like for them, whipped cream's like ice cream. It's candy. Yes, you know what I mean? They're just up yeah. there like sugar, eating whipped cream, you know, hanging out. Yeah. And they end up passing out. So he's Unreal. like, okay, I'll, I'll never do it again. I didn't know what it was, but... Yeah, apparently he just passed out from <laughs> whipped cream what nitrous a oxide. Great story. <laughs> and, and then yeah, it's the perfect reference to the night the Roxbury, them getting all the cans of whipped cream. Yeah, and, that's what I think. Oh of. my gosh. Is this before or after you turn the router off? <laughs> uh, yeah, so internet shuts off at midnight. So I think it was after. Your kids are gonna maybe see this and be like, Dad's turning the internet off. <laughs> oh no, they know. We've oh, been, they do? Oh my god. But for the longest time, the they kids did assume know. the internet just stopped working at midnight. Yeah. It, they, the darn would, internet just goes out. Dale and his wife would just go down and <laughs> unplug that router for a long time. You guys did that. Uh we tried a lot and uh it, they found out so quick. Uh, I yeah, mean, they're, they're, like, they're smart kids, dude. It didn't take long before they're like, the lights aren't on. So then they, they'd be, you know, they plugging it in. <laughs> they're, they're following cables you back to the walls. Box, dude. Uh, legit, to, to kill the internet. I'm thinking about like putting something in at the road and just like Walk kill out. switch, <laughs> like coaxial kill switch. Like, it, Kids what about nowadays like a are so addicted to it. Oh, it's, we're all addicted to yeah, it. Yeah, we all I, are. I, right? I find myself just all over the place with this stuff. I, I try super hard to only turn on TV after dark. Like mm. no TV until yeah, sun's and in the summer. Down. That's late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's late. Yeah. That's bedtime. Um, <laughs> and then it's like internet will go off, and I'm like, ah, oh, just one more show, right? Like yeah. you're, it's in the middle of like something, and you're like, ah, oh, all right, we we gotta set the example. We gotta do something. Or we got to turn it back on and, you know, it's yeah. hypocritical, but yeah. we're adults. Do as we say. Yeah, just trying to be our best parents. It's yeah. tough. It's a different world. It's tough. We're, we're actually it's in so a different hard. world than we were raised in. It's so, so it's hard to yeah. be the best parent in a new world. And it's such a simple solution, too. You just have to unplug the internet. I think I would say nine out of ten problems in the house is from the internet, at least in my house. Like, Kids don't want to do anything because they want to make sure they're there for like a game event or like someone's getting on Discord in like an hour or it's something it, news coming out. And it's, it's like, yeah. okay, you don't want to go ride go-karts because of this. Yeah, like, it's, mm -hmm. it's like the new way kids hang out. Yeah, and you're, right? you're part of the problem. Yeah, no, like, I know. Hang I on, Roman's yeah. video is coming out. You know, in yeah. the past, that was a thing. Yeah, it was a thing. And um, it was like, we can watch it when we get back. Yeah. Like, let's go have fun. And uh, actually, that reminded me, getting back to, like, the whole YouTube thing, way off topic. But part of me still hasn't recovered from what I call a hyper YouTube life. And that is where your brother, Roman Atwood, or yourself always has big events mm. or plans or something super exciting going on all the time. Yeah. And it's like when you quit that, it's like the kids, what what are we doing this weekend? What's Roman doing this weekend? Does he have monster trucks yeah. or like what's going on? And like when you took that year off, it was kind of like rehab 
for our family, because you didn't have things going on all the time, it's like we were able to like become us a little more because you had less big events going on. That's interesting. And it'd be I, like, I know that feeling. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, we wouldn't have anything major going on and the weekend was like, you guys would have something going on, like get togethers, whatever yeah. the case yeah, may we be. Yeah, we going it, big as hard and fast as we could for many years. Yeah. Do you ever it, think you'll go back to YouTube? Like maybe uh, like a, a project or like- come back. I don't know. They, so like- I know you're working on projects. Like, have you ever thought of, of making- I All the time. All the time. And like, it wasn't like a month and a half ago, like before we ever talked about like the podcast or anything, I was like, I'm uploading a video. And the video was just going to be like, why I left YouTube. Like a quick yeah, that would do 10 great. minute exclamation, es, exclama, explanation video yeah. on why I left YouTube. And I was like, we're going to make it happen. And then like every night I was like, all right, we're going to do it. Something came up. The internet like went pushed out. It back. I think it was yeah. just waiting for this moment. I think it's more appropriate here. That's cool. Yeah. So I think it worked out really well. Yeah, I get, I mean, we still get asked. Yeah. I do. I think the projects that you're working on on the weekends, a lot of people would love to come along those journeys. I think they would too, but I also don't have, I would need someone like, Running and gunning, someone yeah. editing. I would I would need it as like a business. Cause like, yeah, so the projects I'm working on, I'm rehabbing a house on the river. Oh. Uh that's been taking a ton of my weekends. I've, I know we don't even see you. I've We're been like restoring an old 1987 Regal Cuddy Cabin boat, um, which we just had out last weekend. It turned out great. By the way, this type of activities you're talking about yeah. are killing it on YouTube. Yeah. And I've always been interested in those type of activities. Yeah. Like growing up, Monster Garage, Orange County Chopper, like custom build. Yeah, what's doing really well is is these storyline videos that, that last 20 videos. Yeah. So where we created the most epic video we could in one video. Yeah. And tomorrow, the next video. Now it's like stretch that 20 videos, build a story. Yeah. You come along, you're part of it. And then you start the next project. That's crushing it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. honestly, that would be fun. Yeah. But like, I would need help. Yeah, you need I, a guy to run. I can't, like, and YouTube's changed so much. Yes. From when I was on it, you know, you have a single camera. It's vlog style. It's really kind of raw and simple. Now, yeah. every channel I go to, it's like full production. I'm like, how are they editing like this every day? How are they, you Dude. know, they're, they're all using digital SLRs yeah. and doing these focuses and rack mm -hmm. focus. And I'm like, I can't do that. It's insane how that switch happened because when I was vlogging myself, yeah, it was frowned upon to have somebody filming you. Like right? there was a big yeah, it's not disconnect. Real. There was this big disconnect, right? Now yeah. you're not talking to me, you're talking to somebody else. Yeah. And I remember trying that for my movie because I didn't have time to vlog and my views just dropped like mm. literally overnight. So I went back to vlogging yeah. and it was like, kind of build it back up. But now everyone's running with camera guys and- Yeah, the production quality has went through the roof. Yeah, and all these new cameras like we're shooting on here. Yeah. They're so reasonably priced and they produce such great content, uh, quality. And, yeah. Yeah, it does. It looks so good. Yeah, I think I sent maybe like a month and a half ago, two months ago, about the same time I was like, I was like kind of getting ambitious. I was like, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump yeah. in again. Um, I sent you this video about these mini metal jet boats these people were oh, building. Yeah. And it turns out you were just down with Cletus. That's right. And that's the those were the videos I was watching of this guy in his mini jet boat. Like, I want to build one of those. Oh, I'll build one of those dude, in the next few sick. years. They look so fun. Well, we have great connections on that. That would be that would be cool. They down look the river. so cool. Yeah, it'd be perfect for the river. Yeah. That'd be cool. Little river house with one of the metal jet boats. Yeah. They're tiny. Send dude. it over one of the locks. <laughs> 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 I would never do that, but someone probably could. <laughs> Just a full send. Yeah. Childhood memories. Um, you were you were we, we just took a bathroom break. Dale was talking about me at 16 looking like a little kid, like look like Kane. Yeah, so I was trying to put something on screen so that we could use this TV. Yeah. And uh, I'm scrolling through. And my kids are like, that's Kane. I said, no, that's Roman. Oh my god. And I'm like, here's the scary thing. He had his driver's license. Oh like god. you were you were 16 with a driver's license and you look like Kane now. You know what's weird is I felt like such an adult, so grown. And now when I see 16-year-olds driving, I'm like, that's a little kid driving that car, dude. <laughs> right? It's like we we uh, we feel so old when we're yeah. 18. We feel like adults. And now I, I I'm like, I look at no, I'm like, 
Noah looks more like an adult than I yeah, do. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I, I was. You were tiny. I was. I was malnourished. A cereal body. And I, I was, was always bigger than you. Yeah. So. Oh I, my god. This kid were, used to pin me down. There was no way to get up. <laughs> no way to get up. We also, in, in the home we grew up in, we had one bathroom, and every day after school, it was about <laughs> what do you think a mile home? Uh, half mile. Half mile ish. And every day that bell rang, it was a race because whoever got to that bathroom first got to poop first. <laughs> and and you had to get to that bathroom. You yeah, didn't we, poop at school? No, we never, never went to the bathroom in school. Never. <laughs> never. Not till high school. Never. And then in high school, we didn't have any doors. No doors on the stalls. I was like, what? this is the weirdest Oh, that's right. Crap. They removed them after I left. <laughs> they we, were, had, we had doors. They were gone before that. I never remember a door. Even junior high, there was no doors. We really? had doors. Well, I would hope, especially in a girl's bathroom. Yeah, but I feel like men have more to show in the front anyway. Like not when you're sitting. Cover that up. Like <laughs> not when you're sitting. Especially when you don't well, who is sitting? You just like <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, childhood memories. I don't know where to begin. Uh yeah, so I was scrolling through all this old footage that we had digitized. Tons of you BMXing. Yeah, I loved it. This guy would bike. Actually, there's footage of you biking in the snow. All the dirt ramps covered in Still snow. Ramping. And you're out there ramping. And like it's solid ice from like, and you were driving at this time, by the way, because yeah. um, the mud running pits beside the dirt ramps would freeze over. Ah. And you guys were like peeling out on your bikes. Dude, and I thought I was going to be a, a pro BMXer. That you know was what my story I want to hear? The time that you let Dale drive your car home. Oh, oh that's, that's a, a great story. Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad. You know, it, it kind of actually may have saved my life, though. If you remember, that's how Charles discovered the carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah. So, so I guess you're yeah. welcome. So thank you. <laughs> uh, All right, let me let me let me lead this because uh, you know. I want to say like everyone, tons of random people, like even family. What was it like growing up with Roman? And I was like, it was great. It was great. Like. Uh, no issues. Like we fought like normal brothers, yeah. kind of a healthy dose of fighting. And there was this certain point though, where you had this cool factor and it was like, Roman was just cool <laughs> and he was older than I was. So he had older friends mm. and he was cool. So like, I kind of flew under like the protection <laughs> of Roman's coolness. I don't remember that. Like he would, he looked 12. Like graduating. You know what? I wasn't cool. I think people just felt bad for my size and they protected me. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. You had <laughs> you you've always had this natural attraction oh, to I you. Yeah. But you. anyway, so I got this cool brother. He's got this uh Plymouth Valiant. Yeah. 1972. First car. Roman's always been terrible with money. He would uh always borrow my money or say, Dale, we need this Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> We need it. You got 400 you bucks, were right? At making it. Yeah. I, well, I was better at saving it. Yeah, that's and true. um we'd always get in these things. Oh, we need this. Dale, you got money, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, Roman's driving. I'm two years younger, so I'm 14. He's like, hey, you want to drive? I think you had your temps. No. You don't. No, no. Never driven a car in my life. <laughs> and also, <laughs> but man, I'm at spot. and also, dad, when you were much younger, would let you drive the truck. Like he would have you pull back, you'd back up to the factory dock door and yeah. like pull out and stuff. I never got that, not a minute of that. So I'm like, cool, uh, Romans let me drive his car. How hard can it be? You easy. know, we cruise. So we're going down our road and our house is coming up. Yep. He doesn't say anything. He assumes I got this. Yeah, you just, <laughs> he's, he's like on he's, the brake and he's, turn. He's bigger than me. He's got this, right? I'm just like, turn. I go to turn. He doesn't hit the brake at all. No brake. <laughs> no power steering. Just sends it straight into the ditch. So I go through the ditch. Boom. Hit the front of the car in the ditch. It wasn't a big ditch. No. But it was enough. It smashed the front of the car up. It was smoke coming out of the car. The hood was all bent up. It was the end of it. It was the end of it. And like, I felt so bad. I never offered to pay him back. He never brought it up one time like hey you owe me a car or you owe me a thousand bucks or whatever it cost yeah like you never brought it up and like to this day i'm like man like <laughs> I, i'm surprised that never came up that is interesting and then i was like oh well 
he did ruin my trampoline. I've heard which that. Which is 350 bucks. I so maybe we're even. I technically still owe him a trampoline. Yeah, Technically. I've heard but then I go back to the car and I'm like, kind of even. Eh, it's probably more on your side than mine. Well, the odd thing about that crash was I was I was suffering some serious illnesses. Yeah, maybe you were loopy at the time. Like Dale Drive. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was loopy after the ditch. Uh, no, I, I was incredibly sick. Like hospital visits. Nobody can figure out what's wrong with me. That accident was when my uncle, my uncle's a mechanic, he was working on the car. That's when he realized, I think I know what's wrong with Roman. There's no exhaust on this car. Yeah. And he sit, I would sit in it all winter and let that thing warm <laughs> up. And on all that carbon monoxide's just rolling up into me. Oh my God. And we didn't know until it was crashed and he was working on it that he said, Hey, I think I know what's wrong with him. And that, you know. If we got exhaust pipes put on it. It was meant. It was meant to be. But yeah, I've always felt bad about that. Yeah. Well, it was I, a beautiful I think car. about it like every five years, and I'm like, ah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a Sega Dreamcast, dude. So we're good. Yeah. If, if I, I feel like if I ever found a car like that, you probably wouldn't want one. Oh, you'd be surprised, dude. You really? should see what I'm buying nowadays. <laughs> Not a Valiant, though, right? <laughs> Not a Valiant. Seventy-two Valiant. That thing was sweet. I could. The only way I could do a burnout. Was I'd have to <laughs> on top of squirrels. I'd have to, I'd have to put it in reverse and get going backwards, and then just slam it into drive. Oh my just god! Boom! And the tires would just try to go. I was in the car many times for that. You yeah. would drive me to school. You'd drop me off. You'd pick me up. Um, I'll never forget. We had a new kid at school, Patrick. First day at school, he's wearing a skater shirt. So I'm like, "Hey, dude, I'll take you home." Take him home. <laughs> we hit a stop sign. I'm like, "Brake check!" And I just hit the brakes. His head goes through the front windshield, breaks his nose, shatters my windshield mm. from that brake check. First day I met him. Were you I friends after that? I remember that. that. Yeah, we yeah, actually they stayed friends. We actually stayed friends. What did his mom say? I don't know. Was she a helicopter mom? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Not if she's letting him ride home with some random person. I, I could imagine it was a good conversation, but uh, yeah, we, we did become friends. Yep. Uh, what a way to meet. That's how I met Ross. First day I met Ross. Full, total Travis Pastrana's buggy. And everyone wonders why I drive everywhere. Yeah, you're the Dom Toretto. She does pretty good. She does do well. She gets us there fast, too. <laughs> so, obviously, this is probably go on for days, dude. We have a million stories. There's um, There's been a lot of history, for sure. Yeah. I think uh, a fun... You know what would be fun is to get Dad and you on here. Just a free-for-all. A family. <laughs> just... Because, dude... Some of the stories I know I'm going to think of after this episode. I'm like, dang it. Yeah. It's ah, always do a part two. It's endless. Yeah, I it really, really wish, is. But uh, we're pumped that you're feeling better and, 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 and now have a way to share that, that knowledge. For sure. Uh, that's a huge. I have, taken it, I have taken it as a bit of a mission to spread the word about it. I, I was putting it on my socials. Uh, everything I could do, I told everyone in the family. And I, I have been educating myself so that yeah. I can like spread well, it. Well, something's happened to us just so that we can help people. For sure. Like so, that car. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I, I, maybe you should have a demolition derby. I'll be your top pick. Just, Show me some ditches and just give you an old Valiant. send it. Should track that thing down. So, all right. I think that's the episode. Thank you. Great. Absolutely. Thanks Best for having me on. Ever. And uh, your guests have always treated us in the family like gold. So yeah. I, I appreciate everything everyone's done for us over the years. Yeah. We got beautiful viewers. One of a kind, actually. You know what? Viewers. That's yeah. from something, right? Yeah. No, it's old. Old YouTuber. <laughs> old, <laughs> Not that old. Old YouTuber. We love you guys. Thank you for uh, all the shares, the likes, the love. Uh, thanks for supporting this family for so long. You are beautiful. You are one of a kind. Smile more. <laughs>